Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast with Mike Trainer, Jay Jules, and John Depot. Hey, what's up, Giants fam? Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast. I'm Mike. That's Schulz. That's John. Kind of a boring week football-wise. I know, like, uh, a couple of things started. A couple of trades, though, in the NFL. Jules, what do we got on deck, man? Well, before we get into it, you're right. I mean, it is sort of a boring week for that. So, instead, I, I like, filled my whole, like, time leading into today with just fantasy baseball, baseball nonsense because, you know, I just have to do it, right? Like, I, I can't, like, let go of a season, right? I have to fucking end up on four different fantasy baseball teams. Gosh. But I do say that by doing all that kind of craziness, it does keep me sharp so that when football season starts rolling around again for fantasy-wise, like, my brain has just been going fantasy for the last six months that, like, boom, I swing right back into it again. And it's no, like, cold turkey or nothing, you know? It's just like, yo, fantasy all day, baby. I can't even do one, one baseball <laughs> Football, I yeah, love, yeah. but baseball, I just, it's too boring to me. You know what it is? Like, the ones where you could set set your team and forget it, because that's all I used to do. The week. Used to do. Right, the, the weekly week, right? joint, where you just set it and forget it. And then it's like, lately, I've been getting, like, kind of, like, pulled back into doing, like, a daily one. Yes, you could set your lineup for the whole week if you wanted to. But, like, if there's a rain out or a guy gets scratched for the day yeah, or, yeah. like, you know, a guy, you know, whatever, you do want to go back in there and fix it if you could, especially if you got, like, somebody on the bench, right? So, like. The only thing that saves me is that you have the app. So if you have like some downtime, you just pop on the app for like a quick minute. But it's yeah. remembering to do that shit, you know, like on a Friday, God forbid you go to happy hour or something like, yeah, good luck yeah, with that. <laughs> Dude, I, used to, I used to follow baseball like religious. I knew players from other teams, like the whole roster, the whole team. Now it's like, I, I don't know who the fuck's playing on the other teams besides the Yankees. And to be honest, I don't give a fuck. Like, I just don't care. <laughs> but to, to also be fair, right, I, I split the leagues in half in a way. Where I did, I did, I did two of the four bombed. Like I, I barely remember finishing one of them. Right, I was like that one that was crazy up at Odyssey. Like it starts too late. Yep. I was like, I went out for half an hour with drinks, and then I was like, I was like, fuck it. I kept drinking on the train. I was like, yeah, screw this. So like by <laughs> by eleven o'clock, when this thing is like fu- like fully going, yeah, I was already in the bag, you know. <laughs> and we'll see what teams come out. We'll see. We'll see. Like if there's really some kind of truth to this, whether or not you you draft way better drunk or way better sober, if there's some sort of in between type of thing. I don't know. Well, let's hope that let's hope the New York football giants actually don't use your logic. They drift the correct way and we get some good guys at five and seven and, and the rest of the fucking drift. But uh, yeah, let's, I, know, uh, I let's tell you, I had some good teams that I drafted really drunk. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Well, let me know in 162 days. <laughs> oh man but but anyway getting into it's a football topic i mean i guess we should start off with that trade i know it's probably a little outdated at this point but you know what this is that type of trade that could eventually peaks itself back around at some point you know during the draft if not maybe next year right there's going to be definite opportunities there right and mike mike what, what was the details on that trade between the saints and the eagles when they swap picks and a couple other things well the eagles traded picks number 16 and 19 and number 194 to the Saints and in exchange for picks number 18, 101, 237, a 2023 first round pick and a 2024 second round pick. So now now the, the way the draft chart is set up. So now the Saints have enough like points, you know, with the draft charts and getting points. They have enough points to swap 16 and 19 to move all the way up to number five if they wow. wanted to jump Carolina for, like, a quarterback. I mean, do you guys, would you mind doing that move? Would you want 16 and 19? Or would you just want a stud at number five and let it roll right there? I'm leaning towards that way. I don't want to trade. I, I would consider it at, at with the seventh pick, honestly. If yeah. we can draft five and then trade seven for, for those, two, I mean, why wouldn't you do that? If, if you can get two first seven, round picks, seven is different, seven different job. But this is the way the chart is. This is saying this, this would work for number five. It won't work for number seven. So the points going in well, different directions. So would you do it for number five? I guess it depends on who's left on the board, right? I mean, do you have to make the decision before the draft starts or can you make that while you're on the clock? I'm you're making it while you're on the clock. And there's a player that you absolutely can't live with that. Then you can't make the trade. But if you go, if you like three or four guys 
enough to draft top five and they're all gone. And then you're going to be like, eh, I, I, you know, I, I, I love the guy who's going to, I'm going to pick up five, but I really like two different players in the teens. And then you can still pick at seven. I mean, that's, that's hard. Not, that's hard not to entertain the idea of doing with two first round picks of this year. Jules? Yeah. I, I mean, for me, Mike, it, it's definitely going to boil down to, are both Neil and Icky gone? Is both Hutch and Theox and the gone? You know, Tib- Tibbo gone? Yo, if all four of those guys, I call him Tibbo now. That's his new name, Tibbo, right? He's got a new name every week. Every week he's got a new name, right? Now he's Tibbo, right? I don't know which one I'm going to stick with just yet. Depends if he ends up a giant or not. Uh, no, seriously, like, like if you're telling me in, in that sort of like, you know, I, 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 I hate to put it this way, but I guess like doomsday scenario in a sense where, you know, the top two tackles, the top two edge guys are off the board at five. It becomes extremely tempting to me personally. If that is the scenario, I do do the trade. Absolutely. I am absolutely pulling the trigger 100 percent because at, at, at the next wow. best thing, what happens? They're jumping up there. You're saying what? They grab a quarterback. Was that was that the, the scenario here? That's yeah. Right? They jump so they, they're grabbing a quarterback. And all that lays now is they, they did that to jump Carolina, who Carolina might still end up taking a quarterback, depending on which way the Saints end up going. And we don't know where they're going to pick. You and very well might end up literally being right back in that same spot. You know, in a weird in a weird sense, like if the Saints jump up, they take the fifth spot, and then all of a sudden they go grab quarterback, and you don't know what Carolina is going to do. Worst case scenario, Carolina grabs maybe Cross, right? So now all the tackles are gone, or, or maybe they 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 grab they grab um, you know uh, you know uh, one of the other edge guys, right? You know, there's a few others, but you, you guys kind of get, or, or maybe they go Hamilton, or maybe they go Sauce, right? You lose out on one of those guys, but now think of it, right? Because now the seventh pick comes back, and you still may have. You know, one of these edge guys still there. You may still have Cross sitting there at seven. But now also you're going to have picks picks 16th and 19th where a lot of these other names might emerge. You know, uh, you know, Linda Baum and and Devin Lloyd and different names like that, where it's like all of a sudden, man, we, we just kind of picked up a big little scoop right there. I don't know. Me personally, like I said, if my top four guys are off that board, which we all know are the two edges and the two tackles, I've been saying it for months. Then at five, I know I got another two first round picks with only having to wait for Carolina to make one more decision. I'm all in on that, man. All in. I don't know about you, Mike. But then you got to pay like you got to pay for another draft pick. If we do get 16 and 19, that's another guy we have to pay. And we still got to free up money, even though we adjusted a Dory Jackson's um, contract. We gave him another void year and that freed up about like five, six million dollars. So, I mean, listen, I'm not a big guy i'm i love to cr- critique the cap because i think it's all bullshit anyway i think people make a big deal out of it but it really depends on what the giants you know if they have like a long board and they have plenty of guys that are going to last through all the way to 20 and you want to grab three guys in the top 20 that's kind of appealing in, in a way but to not to pass up if we pass up like a guy like neil to do that trade then right i want to do it you know like john said it's all like who's there at the moment and you know what I mean? It's like if we do the trade out of five, is Carolina going to fuck us and draft the guy we want before seven? You know what I mean? So we got to worry about like that in a way. But I'm staying. I'm staying at five, I think. I mean, but like I said, you know what? With the exception of maybe Kyle Hamilton, right? Like I, I know that's a name that gets tossed around and maybe even Sauce Gardner at this point, right? The other big names that are starting to jump up in there are obviously Cross, uh, you know, obviously Trayvon Walker, right? So those are some of the names that Trayvon Walker, I mean, just because we went to go visit down in, uh, the, uh, you know, Georgia today or whatever that case was, and he's visiting, we got him scheduled off on it. Like, it's just the media has been going crazy with his social media, regular media. It, it's as if, like, this kid's now going to be jumped into, like, the top three overall pick. I mean, I'm even seeing some of these mock drafts going down like that. So, like, you know, it, it, it's going to be a little wild with that kind of stuff. But for me, I, I'm still sticking to what we saw, if you think about it, right? When you saw, when we look back and say January, before the combine, before senior bowl, before all that kind of shit, the top four names that kept popping up, maybe not so much Icky. Icky was kind of, he was a little further back. He was sort of outside of the top 10 at that point in time. There were other people that were kind of flying into there, but it was always Hutch. It was always my man, Tibbo. It was always, it was always Neil getting thrown around. Those three guys all day, every day. You saw those three names in the top four, top five, every single time. We went to Senior Bowl, same thing. You went to, you know, the Combine, same thing. So for me, I see those four guys, and they're still one of them still sitting there at five. 
then no, maybe I don't make this trade because I think they're that big of a player. And at that point in time, I could see Carolina maybe stealing one at six, especially if we let the Saints come in and their quarterback that they were looking for just got stolen from them. They might just be like, screw this. They might even try to trade back. Who knows what they do, right? So you kind of just leave that open there. So to me, it's those guys or nothing. That's what I've been holding out for for the longest time. So once those four are off that board, I, you know, I look, I've seen film on cross. To me, Walker, I, yo, I, I, there's just there's a lot of different things with those guys. I'll let you guys talk for a minute. John? Mike? <clears throat> John, if you want, if you want to go, I, I, I don't know. I say the same. I feel like I say the same thing every week this time of year, man. Like last year was the same thing. You get, you get into, you know, April. It's just you get different guys. You know, they just bore talking about the same names. They got to change it up every week. So, I mean, at this point, I'm just just excited about the fact that what we in, almost three weeks away at this point. Three weeks. Is it, yep. is it three weeks? Let me, let me double weeks. check my, my account. Two days. Three 23, weeks. 23 days, boys. 23 days. And we are going to know who our draft picks are going to be. It's fucking, it's fucking exciting. I I love the whole weekend. The whole weekend is fun to uh, dive into, man, see all the trades and everything that happens. Mm-hmm. This, this is definitely going to be a surprise in the top five. I just, I just can't wait to see what it is. Yeah, Especially always- a year like this year, you know, where you have – you have there's no, like – true consensus like there's no trevor lawrence going going number one overall you don't have that type of a guy this year especially you know the quarterback position you know there are rumors that no quarterbacks going to go in the first round which <laughs> that would be fucking bananas if that happened but um you know th- there's probably more intrigue around this draft just because of that um just for the nfl community as a whole not necessarily for the giants but um just just in, just this year in general there's a lot more intrigue in the, at the very top of the draft of what's going to happen you know, it's funny, like Colin Coward came out. He's like with the Eagles and Saints trade. He's like, I think the Eagles winning a trade for more picks with the Saints would be even cooler if the Eagles were able to be great at drafting. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> they, they, they seem to make a lot of these good trades, like where they get a lot of these picks. But like, I mean, who have they really draft that really turned out to be like so fucking great, man? I just I haven't seen it, man. Keep fucking up. Carson baby. Wentz. Yeah, Carson Wentz. <laughs> Nice yeah, for all the teams, back. and now back in the division. No, but listen, you know yeah. what? It's crazy. How, because I was gonna I was say, like, how funny would it be if fucking Carson Wentz goes and sweeps the Eagles this year? <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd, That'd be, be actually fantastic, nice. actually. But yo, it's so crazy, right? Because we sit here and everybody comes out with all their little projections and who they want and what they want to pick. But look, if, if, if look, just focus in on the Giants. All right, just look at what the Giants did the last few drafts. Granted, new management, new whatever. It doesn't matter. But just in in that kind of a sense, right? And there's other players with the exception of like what you guys were literally just saying. There's no Trevor Lawrence out there, right? There, there was no Kyle Murray where it was just like, a, that's it. This has got to be the number one guy overall, right? You know, Chase Young, all that kind of stuff. You know, I guess Hutch is kind of considered there, but, but there's not, right? You go back a couple of years ago, right? Who really had the Giants taking Barkley at two? Think about it. Oh, everybody, there was no, bro. There was, the, there was not that many people. We, we may have watched it. I'm saying like when you were looking at all these things, there were was, so many other projections, and they had us trading back all day long. A lot of these guys, right? Like quarterbacks. We saw a lot of trade backs. Yeah, we saw a lot of trade backs. Some That's random fucking say. quarterback like Sam Darnold, who was basically out of the league already. Correct. And then the majority was definitely Saquon Barkley. Oh, Josh like, Ro- no, Josh Rosen was getting thrown in there like crazy for that draft. There was so many fucking people being thrown in that draft that we we was we were supposed to get, and we go ahead and take Saquon number two overall. Yeah, it was there. It was getting dangled out there. We always knew it. But it was almost as if someone was going to trade up for it and we would trade back and all this kind of shit, right? And then the following year, show me Mel Kuyper showing us that we were going to take Daniel Jones at number six. All right? Like, come on, please. No, no, I don't want to see I want to see somebody's mock draft that was consistently throwing up the Giants taking Daniel Jones at number six overall that year. It wasn't uh-huh. happening. We could even go as far as say when we took Andrew Thomas, right? Yes, they were, they were all projecting different tackles to be taken at that spot. But they have Makai Beckel up there. They they had Werfs. They had who is that? Andrew Thomas, huh? Did you say Makai who? Beckin, Beckin. You know the one from oh, for the Jets. Yes. No, Beckin, Beckin. No, this time I actually said it correct, man. <laughs> like this time yeah, I Mekhi actually Mekhi said the guy's name right and shit. Come on now. No, but I'm just saying, right? Like no one gets this shit right. Like you go back, like oh, put put like 2020 mock draft, you know, and see what these guys pick. 
And I guarantee you this shit's always out of whack. I mean, you know, you, you look at the way the draft went last year. Yes, a few guys. I, I think, what's his name? Todd McShay threw down that he was like, that he was going to see four quarterbacks get taken off the top four picks last year. And look, three went, right? So he was pretty close. And, you know, like it, was, it was all that kind of shit. But then there was a lot of people interjecting different picks. So, yo, that shit, I'm telling you right now, it happens all the time. Every single NFL draft, this always happens. A player falls a lot further than was expected. Always. All right. Way back in the day, you heard of Warren Sapp. He fell way down. And, and the list goes on and on and on. Guys always fall down on the list. All right. You could even look at McKinney and Old Zolari of recent times that they were supposed to be first round picks and we got them in the second. Right. Yeah. So that shit's going to happen. There are going to be guys, too, that guys get reached for no matter what. Someone's going to fuck up and make a, a reach on a player just because they fell in love with him for some reason and they end up taking him a lot higher than that he was being projected. So, you know, with all that kind of craziness, that's why I look for the consistency. And to me, the consistency is with those four players. I really do believe that one of them should be there at five. And I'm absolutely okay with that unless somebody really comes knocking out our door with some fucking deal that blows my mind away. <laughs> The only people coming over is like the people like reaching for quarterbacks, just like some of the fans that just want all oh, the next quarterback, the next best thing. All these quarterbacks are projects, man. They're going to be like three to four year guys before they're fucking ready to play. So let's stop the nonsense. Let's root for Daniel Jones. Let's get some guys around them to help the both sides of the ball. And let's go. That's it. That's enough draft talk. You guys yeah, want to take a quick commercial break? Yeah. Quick commercial break on the draft talk. Listen, it, you, we, got, well, we got left 23 days. So listen, it's obviously one more week behind this, and then we got to do sort of our final little mock draft thing, I guess like a week before, just to see where things are at, see if anything crazy actually did occur between then and now. But, you know, whatever. Stay tuned for that, but we'll be right back on the BBO NYG podcast. All right, we are back on the BBO NYG podcast. I'm Mike, that's Jules, that's Sean. Jules, what uh, what other topics we got going oh. on? Listen, voluntary camp started today. Lots of things coming out of camp. You know, Dable was in an interview. Uh, obviously, Daniel Jones was interviewed. But one topic I kind of want to start with in regards to it, because, you know, let, let's get the negative out of the way first. Uh -oh. I think we can come back to some positive reinforcement with, with workouts and, you know, how it all is set up and structured. So, look, I get it. I know there's going to be people out there hating already, basically being like, dude, it's voluntary. It's voluntary. You don't have to show up for it. You know, oh, you like, yo, you go to your job on a day off. Well, I mean, let me just stop you right there. Number one, have I gone to a job on my day off before in the past? Absolutely. All right. In all different That's areas, crazy. for different things. Yes, I have gone on a day off to actually go for a meeting, to go for some additional work, how to do some bar cleanings when I was in that industry. So, yeah, I've done it. All right. Well, you're not getting paid. You're not getting shit for showing up on that day. All right. But you do it. Now, you want to put into perspective that this is now something that you're going to do because you're a pro athlete getting paid millions of dollars. And part of what you're doing there is training. So yeah, why the hell would I not want to go work out with some of my buddies from the team? Like right, we go and work out, we do some sets, we make fun of it, we make competition out of it. We see That's who cool. can look for, you know, kind of just get back into the gear with shit. And you're bringing in a new coaching staff with a new GM. I mean, even though I realize most of the trainers and coaching staff were out and, you know, about looking at scouts and you know, doing scouting and everything else. But at the end of the day, you still could go meet your new head coach again, you know, hang out with him on a little bit more of a more relaxed type level and get to feel him a little bit more. But like, that's what I got to say to the voluntary. I'm going to bring up the major reason why this is even a conversation. I want to get your feedback from you guys and then I'll obviously chime back in. But of course, oh. number one guy missing in action was our number 20 pick that I purposely left off the list as far as giving all our number one picks over the last few seasons. Kadarius Tony did not show up so far to these voluntary workouts well my job actually told me to hey come in i won't pay you that's just not happening i'm not going to work they they got to throw dollar bills at my feet like a fucking stripper in order for me to get out of my house to go for voluntary work listen voluntary workouts that's cool like i, I wouldn't mind being around the team hanging out like i would do that if i want to you know be up here get work at but if he's home like in florida or whatever and he don't want to come up yet if he's still working out down there doing his thing, I, you know, I don't mind that like, like either. And I think Dable came out and said like, you know, everybody got a clean slate. So he's not really worried about it anyway, but listen, you know, the leaders did show up and that's more important to me, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley and Leonard Williams. That's really like all I care about when the leaders show up, they'll get the guys rally around them. It's not a big deal to me. 
John, you might want to turn your microphone back up if you want to talk. Yeah, yeah, jot it down for He was going. Look, he was Yikes. going deep on this one. I was gonna say, I just we should have let him go. I know. Yeah, right? so I, I'm just let me finish my entire point and then fucking <laughs> oh, John, you need a commercial break. Um, no, like it's not a big deal technically speaking, but the reality is it's not like a day off. Like oh, it's Saturday, you work Monday through Friday all day long. These these people have been off since fucking the first week of January. Like they've had a hundred days off in a row already with no responsibilities to the team of any kind other than like exit interviews and cleaning out their fucking lockers, yeah. right? Which happened in fucking January. So they've had all January, February, March into April now. It's not a day off. And if you're, first of all, if you're the type of person who's saying, oh yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it's, it, you know, would you go into work for, uh, for your day off? A, if you're a football player, I wouldn't want you on my team, period. If you were that type of person where you're going to stand on ceremony saying you're not getting paid, it's voluntary, or whatever the story is, because the whole point of the game is to be a team player. And if I own the business that you worked for me and said, and I fucking needed something or whatever the bullshit is, and you, I, and you threw your fucking hands up at me when you had offered for fucking three months and I needed fucking you to come in because I'm brand new to the fucking job, Brian Dable and fucking uh, what's his face, uh, Joe Shane. I, I just, I don't understand the mentality behind, okay, hundred days off, but I'm going to, I'm going to need the next 35 days off into the next, you know, the, the, the OTA start or whatever the next, you know, you know, a, a volu uh, voluntary off season workout is what, why, like, I want you to be part of the team. Like this, this game requires, you know, a, 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 the biggest team atmosphere you can have. I, I don't know that, that, that fucking bothers me, man. That, like you know, it's not a big deal technically, but like, you should want to be the guy showing up and being a leader and fucking working out hard, building relationships, asking your fucking teammates, let's go get dinner. Let's go do this. Let's go run the train on some bitch. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. <laughs> Just fucking be there, create that team. So that way, when you start getting into things, like you're already on first base, there's no reason for you to be sitting home. What are you doing right now? You going on vacation, you're playing PlayStation home. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. No, and you know, it's crazy. Listen, I, I know this for a fact. Yo, flights are cheap down back forth to New York and Florida. Cheap, man. So <laughs> you, you, you can't tell me he's like broke or something or the flight's going to cost him a lot of money. I think it's cheap, dude. <laughs> but, uh, and also too, guys, I don't know if you knew, even though these are considered voluntary, uh, you know, practices and showing up and everything else like that, there are quite a few NFL players that haven't worked into their contracts that they actually get paid for showing up to some of these voluntary uh, workouts. So oh, yeah? that is part of a thing. So it's not even like you can. So even if you don't, right, but you show that you would show up to it, I, I would feel that like the, the organization would be a little bit more lenient with restructuring your contract at a certain point or when they have to resign your contract, putting that kind of clause into it. Hey, you've always been coming to these. Here's a little something extra now that you said you've always showed up over the last couple of seasons, right? So like, you know, that that's also an additional incentive. And to me, I, you know, I don't want to pick on the kid right away, but like I'm starting to, right? You know, here's a guy who came into the into the league last year. He took forever to get. He couldn't even get his equipment settled and, and put on right. He was missing practice. He went MIA. I, I, I mean, I went as far as putting his face on a milk carton and said, have you seen him, right? Because that's how much he Remember. disappeared from our practices. He wasn't learning the playbook. He wasn't getting it down. He wasn't getting his rhythm down. It took him till the middle of the season before we even really saw him like emerge into some sort of talent that we were hoping he would be at number 20 there. And yet now here you are with a whole new regime, a whole new playbook to learn. You could be the quote unquote poor man's Tyreek Hill. Like you've been calling him Mike for a year and a half. Right. And you don't even show up. It's like John just said, what are you doing? Playing John Madden. You trying to get like your, your points up on your Madden shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tony, like, yo, right now, man, we got him at, like, a 70. And he's trying to make himself a 90. So he's like, yo, once I get this up, I'll get myself up. Okay. Or at that point in time, show me that you're working out at, at the University of Florida. Show me that you're with some of your training coaches that you worked with down in Gainesville. And, you know, because you see guys do this sometimes during the OTAs, right? They're like, yo, I want to get my head right. I want to get right. I want to get back on some of the stuff I was doing. I want to work with these guys. They know me. It's close to my house. I'm going to be going there like a gym rat. I mean, look, if you go back. I disagree. If you go back like, uh, I'm just saying, but but you can, right? I, I'm going to go after that. you, but I disagree with you. No, but because like where I remember a lot of this from was like Leonard Fournette. 
and Leonard Fournette put himself back out in Colorado because that's where his one of his coaches from LSU had transferred to at the time. And this was a couple of seasons ago before he blew up on Tampa. This was him going into that year kind of basically. And he literally put himself out there and he said he wanted to do like the Rocky, like straight up Rocky when he was training in Moscow on Rocky Four, right? But he wanted to do that kind of a structured training where it was just literally him focusing on training and getting right for football for that season. And that's what he wanted to do. And then when he had to start coming around and getting around for, you know, you know, for mandatory, you know, different practices and stuff like that, he made himself available, but he was getting himself right. And that's what he needed to do. So if you told me a guy like Kadarius Tony was like, look, I just wanted to work on guys. I were, I was very familiar with. I just want to get down a few different things of that. I, I needed corrected because we have been working on it over the past couple of years uh, up until I was drafted. Yo, I'm okay with that, but at least say you're doing that because if not, what are you doing? Are you out partying down at South Beach? Are you are you playing uh, PlayStation on your uh, you know all day long, Madden? I mean, that's where things get a little weird. For me, all that shit is just excuses. There's 180 days between NFL seasons. You need to train like Rocky in the fucking in Russia or whatever the fuck that you want to do. <laughs> you, there's you want to you want to I, I want to I want to train a fucking uh, you know f- whatever whatever you have the entire off season it's four fucking days four days you can't come up and be, be with your teammates i don't know i completely disagree with that i think yeah. that's i think that's something that's fucking them saying they want to work out with this and work out with that is just fucking you know putting lipstick on a pig bro you're just being a fucking lazy asshole you don't want to come up you're here in the nfl for a paycheck you're not here for the championship fucking pedigree Sorry, you just you don't have it in you. You may win one because of the team around you and you may contribute to it, but you're not going to be the fucking reason why that locker room has a Lombardi in it. Because if you're fucking running to go sit and you lay in your own fucking mattress with the exception of four days out of 180, go fuck yourself. And again, you know what? And just, just for, for Fournette's uh, defense, I'm not even sure if he missed any voluntary work, but I just know that he Good. had taken a point in time where he literally went and trained like a maniac like that because he was trying to get himself right. And again, I'm just saying, like, look, what if you scheduled it wrong or, like, people that you were working with, they they had to have you here that week, right? Because you signed up to do, like, a, you know, a 60-day workout with them. I'm just saying. You know, I'm just saying. Like, And again, I'm not excusing it. I'm not excusing it. Ali in his prime. The no, machine, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not even excusing it. But that would literally be the only exception that I could partially make. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, like, all right, you're out there really doing that? Let me see you come back, you know, with like 20 more pounds of muscle on you or like leaner than ever. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, like, you know, yeah. you know so you come in looking like, like, forget it. I don't know. Floyd you Mayweather you could do that anyways, though, bro. You could be of working. Course, you should, you listen, could, of course you could. You're, you're, you're an NFL caliber athlete. You're working out all of the time. But you, you, there's just no, no one walks sure. around in the shape of being an NFL caliber player without being some form of a gym rat. There's just no way for that to be the case. So if it's just just his wedding, it's in fucking Barbados for that week and it just doesn't line up, go be with your family, family first, get it completely. But if you're just, oh, I want to train with fucking Bob Smith in fucking Arkansas because I like the way his cock hangs, that's fucked up. Be with your fucking team. This is the NFL. You don't want to play like that? Go play fucking baseball, bro. Go play tennis. Well, actually, you know what? I, I think you know what I think it is with Kadarius, right? He may just want to be a rapper, dude. <laughs> Maybe, bro. You know, everybody Maybe. keeps saying, "Yo, you can be the star." Before that, that he's like, "Nah, yo, I'm the Giants." <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe his girl maybe his girlfriend didn't want him to leave and you know he got caught like a will smith type deal man he fucking, he's not allowed man that shit was a star, bro that shit was i was like when i saw that shit on fucking twitter i was like no way this fucking happened i thought it was a gag there probably is fucking some illuminati shit bro where it's just like all set up yeah, it's fucking stuff. like some Illuminati fucking shit. However, that fucking sign they do shit. <laughs> fucking weirdo. That's Jay Z. Uh, <laughs> got triangles on my walls. Well, like, you know, I didn't even register when that when that happened. I was actually doing an online draft for one of those drafts that I mentioned earlier, and my brother like heard it from his girl. Where she's like, yeah, Will, Will Smith just smacked Chris Rock. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then we like finished it and I went back and I actually started paying attention to other shit besides baseball. And I was like, oh, listen, all right. love, <laughs> love, love makes you do crazy things. And yeah, that's yeah. why Tony ain't here. He's with his bitch. 
<laughs> all it is. Bro. It's all it is. Can we? Can we? So, when I saw it, I saw him get up and smack Chris Rock in the face. Like, I thought it was funny, but I was like, yo, that's pretty fucking gangster ass move, bro. You're at the Oscars. This kid said, this guy said something about you. You know, you don't like it. And you got up and actually slapped him. Cool. <laughs> but then you watched the video. And he's laughing at the fucking yeah. joke. Jada makes some type of side face to him. And then he's like, nah. It gets up, smacks him, which was like, ah, would you have done that if Jada was laughing too? Or, you know, did you feel like you needed to, like, kind of do that? And then why. when he gets back to his seat, bro, and he's yelling, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth, and his voice is, like, quivering. I was like, bro, this guy is like, you were Muhammad Ali, and Chris Rock is like a teenage girl in size. Like, Right. You can't be quivering right now, bro. You're worth like a quarter billion dollars. Everyone on earth knows your fucking name and face. Like, at least get the bass back in your voice. That's I know, all I'm saying. I know why, John. You know why he fucking acted like that? Because Jada, early on in her life, she loved Tupac, you know, the rapper. She loved him. That was that was her love of life, right? And then he died. And then she fucking marries this Herb Will Smith, this goofy guy, fucking big ears, always fucking hoo hoo, like fucking laughing, you know? <laughs> Doing silly raps and shit about like you know, Auntie and mommy and so uncle, that's that, you know, that. you know, fucking all that bullshit, getting thrown out of the, throwing his best friends out of the fucking Bel Air shit, all that fucking corny shit, and then uh, he had to act Tupac. Crazy. He had to act. No, I know, but he, he had went, to act. Definition Tupac. <laughs> he had to act like he was Tupac. He's like, yo, fuck, I gotta act tough, all badass. <laughs> Pretty much, she just cheats on him all the time, apparently, with her fucking kids' fucking friends. It's fucking weird. I wonder what that's about, bro. Like, I don't follow any kind of celebrity shit like that. But, like, why would... If that's... If, if, do they have open relationship? If so, like... No, definitely not. Like, yeah, so you, you, ain't, this, you ain't smacking a man on, on live TV in, in the Academy Awards if you got some sort of, like, really open and okay relationship, right? Because then he just be like, ah, right, talk to him, you gotta talk. That's all right. I don't know. I, I mean, I'll he let one of my other boyfriends smack you. <laughs> you know, and the joke was actually good though, because like if if she didn't have alopecia and she just shaved her head, like that look for women, like sorry, if you're a woman and you have a shaved head and it's for purely out of like you think it's sexy, I will speak nah. on behalf of the 85% <laughs> of heterosexual men in the world. It does not look good at all, even a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> it is all horrific. We're all going to lose our hair when we get older. Fuck it. She just lost nah. her hair fucking sooner bro, than other. This fucking thick shit, bro. It's like, going to take some medicine to fucking make that happen. Bro. <laughs> it's going to fucking go away, man. It's not a fucking, yeah. like, it, it's one of those bullshit diseases. It's just make you look stupid. Like, it's not uh, a real disease. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, she's not dying. Now we're going to get shut down by the Alicia Foundation. Oh, great. Good stuff. I can't even, hey, I don't listen, even know what the, that means. Apple. She, I, I would, listen. I'm friends with a lot of black people. I know that black women like to wear wigs. I would, yeah, I would saw off one of my arms if Jada Pinkett Smith, in her entire life, to any fucking event of any kind, didn't wear a wig. Yeah, While right. before she had alopecia, so if she's okay with wearing wigs with like just just in general because she wants long straight hair or whatever the case is, then her decision not to wear one now that she has alopecia. Is she's okay with having this fucking, you know, having the dome like that? Right. And she just wants to rock the ball look because it is part of like, you know, their, you know, that's like a style for for some people. Uh, again, I don't know why it's fucking gross looking. You look like a fucking sperm that grew up wrong. Um, but regardless, <laughs> regardless, like, I don't even think she was that salty about it. I, I wonder if she just like prodded Will to see like, Yo, I've been I've been fucking sucking dick all over town. Like, let's see how much you really love me here. <laughs> there goes our sponsorship for alopecia. Yeah, that we that's God. That's out the window for sure. Bye, bye, bro. Game. Either that, we're gonna have to make like four hundred apology videos for it. But you know, what, what are the others gonna have with that one? Huh? I know. Come at me. <laughs> give a shit anymore. Come cancel me. <laughs> yeah, cancel culture. <laughs> hey, listen, if Chris Rock didn't really get any uh, any feedback for that, all you got to do is have Will Smith smack you real quick and it'll be all forgotten. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the fact that he like open handed slap, and that's so much more disrespectful than a punch. You know what oh, I yeah. mean? It's that's just, just straight stunning somebody. Yeah. Oh, look, oh, can you imagine like 
I was going back and forth on the Mixed Up podcast like last week talking to Malarsic about it. Like, and we were both like, oh, I can't believe you know, Chris Rock was being a bitch about it. Like, if it was one of us, he, he should have fucking attacked him. But the more I thought about it, he kind of handled himself pretty professional. I got to give it up to Chris Rock. But after the whole thing, I'm finding that motherfucker and I'm going to find it. <laughs> like, after, you know, after the fact. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can't like, you, like see that him, shit. you see him in a party or something or out one night at a restaurant or a bar. Yeah. It's kind of on at that point. You know what I mean? Well, funny, I'm getting, I'm getting is, a whole bunch of MIBs fucking have my back and going after him. Like, you know, the men in black and fucking go fucking beat I, him. I actually, him I actually went in a little further on it. I probably should have been able to mix it up to, to discuss it in a little more detail. But uh, literally, they, you know, there's one of these like, uh, you know, body language guys that works for like the, you know, the feds and all that kind of shit. And they, they read all your body language and all that kind of shit. And they kind of sum it up short. He said that Chris Rock kind of like with his body language, and everything else actually paused for a second because it looked like as if he was going to go back at him for a second. And then it actually yeah. almost looked like he was like, all right, he realized that he where he was and he was at the academy where he was actually even going to come back with some jokes. That's what it's like. Saying. Yo, this dude's going to be like, quick with oh, shit. So like, yo, he uh, it was a million. He probably could have rattled off. Yeah, he, and then, he did, and then he just kind of like really backed off. And like you said, realized, I think like caught up where he actually was. Jules, but like, if how, you guys get a chance, how look at great. SNL. SNL. How great, how great would it have been if he just rattled off those jokes? Like oh bang, 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 bang. And just oh fucking, God. yo, just broke them both down. That yeah. would have been so much more fantastic than getting into a fight with him right there. <laughs> it would have been great. It would have been, it would have, yeah, it would have lived on in infamy. Now it's just, the infamy is just that smack. It sucks. Well, you can tell. You can tell he's like, oh, he's biting his lip. If you guys have it, I had a feeling they would. SNL went to town on it. So you literally I go back it. and watch oh, the last week. Say they went to town. They were relentless. They like I, the I was. This. I was impressed with how much SNL went at it because Chris Rock's a former member, so you know yeah. former former cast member. So like, you know, <laughs> they, I mean, they went a lot more at will, but still, dude, that that was fucking awesome. Good for them. I, was I want Danny Jones. I want Daniel Jones to be the Will Smith this year. Just start slapping. <laughs> if his teammates fumble or if they drop a pass, if they walk over the sideline, just fucking slap them right there. <laughs> Bang, that's parade approved. That's fucking leadership right there. Oh, so you didn't want <laughs> so a couple weeks back, you didn't want to come out in the media going at people, but now we're gonna smack teammates. I don't smack teammates, that. bro. <laughs> yeah, I can actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> How fantastic would that be? You fucking dropped the ball again, you fucking galaday piece of shit. Whack yeah, right Tom to the Brady. side of the fucking yeah. Tony. You hurt you again. You hurt again? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe you should show up to voluntary Ooh. practices. Uh, voluntary practices next year, son of a bitch. Just start slapping. <laughs> Slap with his left hand. They, I don't want him to hurt his right hand. <laughs> when he's slapping people across the fucking face, do we got any go other uh, huh? You guys go shooting? Like, I haven't been shooting months? since uh, up at uh, you know, Nick from the Mix Up podcast. He has a place upstate, it's not legal mm-hmm. or nothing. We just shoot guns in his backyard. At shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's fucking pretty awesome. They had a crossbow, one of these motherfuckers brought a crossbow with him. I'm like. Fucking crossbow, shoot a crossbow at fucking trees. That's like straight fucking zombie movie. movie fucking weapon right there. Middle ages type shit. Or if you're a real hunter, <laughs> the Walking Dead type shit, man. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like I, yeah. I that, but that last time I've been shooting is probably like a couple years back. Yeah, same. Yeah, fucking, I got a gun last year. It was the like first like legal gun that I was able to like I bought or what a fucking Beretta. And then for a year, I never, I didn't go shooting, and I went last Sunday, and then fucking yesterday, uh, Sunday and Monday I went. It's fucking fun, bro. It's don't like a carry. Good hobby to fucking have. Don't carry it in New York City, man. You go to jail like Plaxico and ruin our super yeah. chances. I don't. I, yeah, I don't yeah, carry yeah, it in New York City. City either. Well, you're, you're gonna have to be doing this via like from wherever correctional facility. But you know what, man? My man did. He fucking carried a little small little gun in his waistband of his like fucking jogging pants. Like what Dude. the fuck? And you and you know he ain't wearing no tight sweatpants either. No. Especially back then, like they don't yeah, wear then, like no. full fit sweats. Like your sweats were baggy as hell, dude. You know, <laughs> yo, for real, like MC Hammer type <laughs> shit. Like, like I, I would be yeah. nervous about like I was a star back then. Phone to that, you know what I mean? Like you just clip your phone to it. Like yeah. I would be nervous about that phone. He shot <laughs> himself. He shot himself. That just made me and think it, about he got that. He shot himself so, and got arrested. It's crazy. <laughs> it's craziness. <laughs> Fuck Bloomberg, man. Fuck him. Yeah, yeah, and honestly. You know, looking back at that, laughing about it, like how stupid were his boys? Like, yo, dude, all I would have been like, right. I would have, 
I would have threw him to the ground and be like, yo, he just got shot. I don't know where it came from. He got shot. Toss the gun. Yeah, Hit the gun. gun and be like, yo, run, we got bro. you, dude. We got you. <laughs> I always said that. Like, yep. how dumb could you be? You get hit, you're like, yo, somebody shot me. And you turn to your boy and you go, hey, dude, get rid of this fucking gun. I got you. <laughs> right. <laughs> for real. I yeah. see you go down to the East River, you toss that shit. Like, that's the end of it. it. Just, there's not even a reason for him to be fucking. You, you got like people around you, bro. Like yeah. you actually need to be carrying a gun other than the well, fact that you feel like you're cool. Like if that's the case, then you should have like some, some dudes around you. Like, well, that, you know, this, just... you know, the story, right, John? Like he went to Ahmad Bradshaw, like got robbed from his jewelry, like two weeks before that. So Plaxico oh, yeah, yeah. took a gun and went to go pick up Ahmad at his house. Like, I'm like, first of all, what kind of neighborhood yeah, you yeah. living in? That you, it was, you, it was in a good area too, right? Yeah, a good area, right? He got fucking robbed for his chain. So Plaxico was like, "Yo, I gotta start carrying, because fuck it, like I don't want my shit to get fucking stolen. I don't blame him." But the idiot shoots himself, and then Bloomberg makes an example about an NFL player, the Giant. He's probably a Jeff fan. Bloomberg, dude, shoots himself in the I leg. He's like, "You going, you going to prison? You going to prison for shooting yourself?" For and really? it still it makes no years, sense to this day. Eighteen I, months. He did oh. 18 months for that shit. And he would he would have been fine to come back and, and play that fucking year. He just grazed himself in the fucking die. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you probably cut yourself uh, worse shaving at times. You know what I mean? For real. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was nothing life-threatening at any circumstances. And what used to drive me crazy about that, too, was that was like sort of when I was like just kind of finishing up bartending in, in like some of those nightclubs. I used to work those hip-hop clubs. So a lot of these guys that were there, these bouncers, they worked with a lot of celebrities. It was rappers in and out of there all the time. And it was inexpensive, especially for guys that are making this kind of money, to have these guys hanging out for an armed guard. Like a regular bouncer was like 300 bucks a night or $400 a night. Right. And, yeah, back then, or whatever. and if it was strapped, it was like six. Like, dude, you only need is one of those dudes. You don't need man. fucking 15 of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? Well, they don't cost you that much. That, dude. <laughs> uh, it, it, just to me, like, that shit never made no sense, especially when, when I was hearing the prices. It was, like, retarded, dude. If you're really going yeah. out to that kind of places where you need that kind of protection, it, just pay a few dollars, man. That's it. Like, all, all these rappers do that shit. Don't let them fucking fool you. It ain't their entourage. They be hiring people to do this. Come on. Like, it's ridiculous. Chris Rock should have had a gun on him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, that was the other thing, too. They kind of mentioned it on last night. I was like, yo, why did he stand there with his face out? Like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, hit me, man. Hit me. <laughs> and I was like, bro, you can fucking move. You're allowed to move. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, he, he leaned right in for it. <laughs> That's what kind of makes you think, like, I know, set up been staged. Like, is it impossible uh, no, for it to be staged? So, I went that deep because I always get into fucking conspiracy theories. I throw my my tinfoil hat on us. You know, you guys have heard me plenty of times when I mix it up. But uh, no, with that in mind, like, yo, the, the, the way this analyst broke it down, and he was going through shot by shot, you know, frame by frame with everything. And like the emotions and the way it was, you know, he said one of the reasons why Will Smith was even laughing in the beginning is, you know, you're all on these bright lights. You ever see people come up on a stage and they go to look out in the crowd, they put their hand over their eyes because they can't yeah. really see all the lights. It's a similar situation. Now you're sitting up front. You got like, you know, 90 cameras on you, lights everywhere. You're with all these big time celebrities. And, and like he's making everybody laugh. So you just start laughing. Half the time, you probably didn't even hear what the fuck he said. You know what I mean? That's it's just like, yo, you're, you're hearing half of a joke. And everybody's like, hi, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it starts to sink in. And it kind of hit Jada. Like, you could see it all, like, break down. And they're all like, wait a minute. Nah, you know what? This shit ain't right, uh, man. Get, you know, get my get my, get my, my wife's name out your mouth. But, uh, you know, like, <laughs> uh, you know, like, that's what kind of happened there. And then even just his body and motion and this and that, like, Yo, Will Smith is is obviously an extremely successful actor and just won the Best Actor Award. So they don't just give that to anyone, right? So this dude was acting, like you were saying earlier, Mike, his voice wouldn't have been cracking up like that. He would have been quivering. You know, he, he that was someone literally showing like full on emotion. And, and there's a lot of that going into it where, nah, this shit was not staged. The dude retired from the Academy and might lose the award. Like, you know, hey, you know, we don't need to make some prank like that. You know what I'm saying? Not, not after the first, like, in-person award ceremony for the Academy that they've had in the last two years. I don't think they're going to take his award away. And he's probably going to take a hiatus for a couple of years. And yeah. he's going to come back with other fucking blockbuster movies. They'll do, like, Independence Day 4 or whatever it is, and he'll be in this one. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking everybody will forget about it. Like, oh, remember when fucking Will Smith smacked fucking Well, Chris listen, Rock? he, he uh, uh, yo, listen, Chris Rock's shows tripled. 
the price of admission for his show yeah. is triple. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody want to hear what he's been staged. So, no. yo, man, yo, anybody got a Chris Rock ticket? I'm in. <laughs> I've actually never. Uh, there's pieces of like bits of Chris Rocks that I fucking love, but overall, like watching a full like hour special of his, I feel like there's a lot of comics that are a lot funnier and less annoying. Like the way Chris Rock delivers his jokes, where he like really emphasizes his t- and is like is like like the T's and the like ends of words like the consonants and words sometimes and it repeats the same joke like four or five six times like you know to emphasize the point just like the, the line the line the line you know what i mean i like hey, i like, I like, I like shit Inc- like he'll just keep going on and on about the same thing like this is way funny your fucking comedian he messed up because he ended up making too many movies with adam sandler you know what i mean like so <laughs> yeah, still, so back. Like, how you make a brand never scared oh, like Chris. <laughs> those are like iconic fucking you know for the time like iconic fucking stand-up hours and like you we watch it like it's funny like there's definitely hilarious moments of it but it's not i don't know not- if you if you like said okay like eminem has the world like the record for most words used um in his rap lyrics like the most total amount of like different words like chris rock for as big as he is somebody on his scale definitely uses the least amount of fucking words <laughs> <laughs> i gotta i gotta listen to his uh stand-up again i like his yeah stand-up. yeah stand-ups are good yeah, that one that one he did years ago with the cr in the back that looked like the colorado rockies uh emblem yeah. that was probably his best i forget the name of it right now but, but that was probably his best one by I like, far was that i liked all of them even the stuff yeah, he's yeah, yeah. now but oh, anyway yeah. like getting uh getting back to giant topic before we go real quick jules um Riley Dixon signed with the Rams, so his giant oh. career has officially ended. Oh, um, so he'll, he'll go back there. to kicking booming punts in the in LA. He'll be he'll he'll return he'll return to form, and then um and I think that's yeah, well, the uh, Giants news. Yeah, well, listen, you know you got Brian Dable who said that you know despite us going off on on Kadarius Tony. You know, he went on and said that it was a packed house there. He was very impressed. You know, like you mentioned earlier too, Mike. All the guys are starting with clean slates. So, you know, once again, it's Dable just, you know, saying the right things. If you actually watch some of that press conference, like he just, he really seems to, you know, for being a guy from Western New York, I know that probably helps a little bit with the background there because, you know, there are a lot of guys out in that way, reporters wise and media that, that try to make it feel like it's New York city, but obviously it's not, but he just seems like a guy that can handle the spotlight. You know, he, he's always joking. He's always, he's, he, I feel like he's always ahead of the press conference. And when these guys are asking him something, they get on, they're like, hey, you know, how you doing, Brian? You know, whatever. He's like, hey, uh, Jim, doing really good, man. How are you? And, like, it throws them off. Like, I I, I constantly see it. You know, where, like, then, like, guys get up and they're like, okay, he's going to ask me how I'm doing. So I better respond back to to, to Coach Dave and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you, Brian. Like, you know, like, he's keeping people on their toes, which is great to see for the media. In addition to that, there was a... Another one of them out there. I, I guess they they bought their daughter or something. And Coach Dave was like, "Oh, Matt, she had a question." I was yeah. waiting for the first talk so I could mention this. Yeah, 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 man, yeah, thank you. Uh, it, that's the one thing that Brian, Brian, that bothers me about Brian Dable. He's got this like bromance fucking going on with with Matt Lombardo. That's budding. <laughs> there's been, like three press conferences, and there's like some like he like stopped the press conference because he saw his daughter walk by the screen and was like, "Oh, does your daughter want to answer a question or whatever it is?" And like just stop the fucking press conference. I mean, it's, listen, I, I, it seems like he's been here for years. Like the way he's, he his, you know, is just his persona is and stuff like that. He doesn't seem like over the top, like, like Joe judge felt like he walked off of the set of a movie. Like he was like, he was know, robotic. He, he was, was very, robotic after a while judge. He very was just robotic, like, but like more like it was just intense. Like not that the moment was too big for him per se, but like the moment was huge and understood it was huge and made it huge where this guy is just like, bro, I got a joint. Like I'm holding under my leg right now. So you guys can't see it. <laughs> like, he ain't yeah, fucking, yeah he, he's, <laughs> I hope, I hope he's successful both obviously because I'm a giants fan. We're all giants fans, but he just seems like the type of guy that like y- y- you would meet, like sitting next to a bar randomly somewhere and you'd actually have a good night bullshit with him. Be like, Oh, that's a fucking good guy. I hope fucking good things happen to him in his life. Like that's that's how he seems like the type got to be. Yeah, I mean, look to me, one thing that that I think is clearly different about this team, as opposed to shit, you can go back three regimes ago, is is the staff. You know, like like I I really really did a little more research looking back on certain things, 
and, and you know, I, I think that they finally, hopefully, got it right with who they brought in with this team, right? So it's not just about David. Because don't forget, he's gonna be the play. He's gonna be the head coach. I doubt he's playing. He's gonna be the offensive play caller. That's gonna fall to Kafka, you know. And, and we're gonna really see what he was there, and he's gonna bring in some of that Andy Reid. And, and mix it in with what Dable was doing up in Buffalo. And then you got Wink Martindale literally had one bad year. <laughs> you know? and, and he's going to bring back an aggressive New York style defense that we all used to love with blitzes and, and mixing in packages and all this kind of greatness that to me, I, I feel that that's sort of the difference there. And if you got a guy who wants to set standards and, and can be strict because look, you know, apparently from what I've been reading as well, you know, they both saying that there's certain dress codes that you have to be in when you come to these meetings and he expects everyone to be like that, not just players. So like he does set that structure, but then you see him, like you were mentioning where he just, he levels off. He, he kind of like jokes around. He can, he can hold up a press conference. Cause guess what? Those people there in that press conference are there to see him and ask him questions. So he's going to go at his pace. You come to see me. All right. Well, this is how I'm going to be. And, and, and like you were mentioning, you know, like, oh, yeah, you know what? There's a guy that, you know, I, I see him in a bar. I have a couple of drinks with him, whatever. I, I want him to have like a real good success with he, whatever he's doing and, and all his endeavors. And, and, and to me, that's what you need. Right. You know, it, it looks like when he want, when he has to get down to business, they're going to get down to business. It's not going to yeah. be that bullshit. They're going to fucking get down to business when it needs to be. He, he doesn't have that Pat Sharmer softness to him. For sure. No. For sure. And you can tell, you can tell that there's there's um, a head coach in there. Like it, he's not just a clown sitting there trying to make people laugh and stuff like that. You like can McAdoo. tell that he, he's there for a reason, but he's bigger almost in his bigger in a sense than than this press conference is. Like we're just gonna we're just gonna talk. You're gonna ask me some questions. I'm gonna give you some bullshit answers, and then I'll shake your hands next time I see you. And that's it. That's it. You know, not like you know, state of the union addresses, you know, maybe, maybe Joe judge was a huge fan of Barack Obama and like the way he handled himself. <laughs> and that's, and that's, and that's why he, he wants to carry on like that. You know? I, I feel like judge was almost like he, he, he wanted to be like Belichick, right. Where he was serious, no nonsense and to the point, but then you can't because Belichick only does that shit. Like he does it. You know what I mean? Like no other coach yeah. is going to on that podium and be able to hold it down like that. I almost so like, feel like the know. opposite of that. I feel like he took the criticism of, of the Joe uh, of being a Bill Belichick and was the opposite. When you watch a Bill Belichick press conference, I mean, it's literally sometimes single word answers. Joe <laughs> Judge gives dissertations if you ask him what fucking color his shit was. Like he's he's he he like went the other direction, like almost in his mind, like to say no, I'm not like Bill Belichick, which maybe yeah, at least. If he did take that kind of philosophy on press conferences, maybe that fucking last 11 minute rant that he had uh, was a week 17 or whatever it is, week 18. Uh, maybe he doesn't do that because he's conditioned himself not to make big things of press conferences, and maybe he's still our head coach. Or, Who knows? or it's like it's like you say too, right? Like like you hear it <clears throat> when you watch some of these true crime things and everything else that's involved. You know, they usually say when someone's lying, they just start rambling. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. They just continue rambling because eventually you're going to like hit something that makes sense. or you're going to buy yourself some time. You know, maybe judge was doing a lot of that. Maybe, maybe the stage was a little too big for him to be the full head coach, you know, out of nowhere with, with, with just having, you know, basically special teams experience under some really good coaches where he never really had to excel, you know, where, where, where Dable was actually calling the plays in back to, you know, in an AFC championship game two seasons ago, and then, you know, had them all the way down to the wire on 13 seconds left in this game from going back to another one. So, you know what I mean? Like, there's a difference there. Like, this guy's been in the gut. He's been doing shit versus another guy. Um, how much say did he really have on those other teams? You know, you know, Pat Shermer, we get it. He was making plays like that. I know there's a huge comparison with him a lot. But like you said, Dable doesn't come at me as being like a soft guy. But he also doesn't come at me as being like a clown, like McAdoo. You know, where, where McAdoo was oh, like, God. you know. It was just like a clown, like all day long with that guy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, I, I honestly feel like he's a combination of all three of the guys that we just saw with obviously a little bit more personality of himself and, and, and obviously hopefully a little bit more offensive knowledge to the game, you know, and how to run a full team. Bro, could you believe that they fucking hired Ben McAdoo to be a fucking head coach, bro? 
<laughs> like I'll, I'll, we've had some, you know, high, we've had some man. coaches that didn't work out. Shermer, fucking you know, Judge, but just the sight of McAdoo just is like, how did this guy fucking do this? Like, how yeah. the fuck did he get he get he got over on them like that? And how the fuck did they go eleven and fucking five? <laughs> Eli Manning. <laughs> Thank you, Eli Manning. Yeah, exactly. Mike, Eli right. Manning, yeah, right. I, I mean, it, it's definitely, definitely possible. But those are some of the good things to say. And guys, I don't know if you saw the part. Last thing, kind of wanted to wrap it up with, but uh, I don't know if you saw the part where Daniel Jones was was being interviewed and he got asked basically, you know, will he be cleared for OTAs and, and for the start of the season and everything else? And he was just like, "Yes, yes, I'll be clear." And they're like, "They're like, oh, all right, so you're gonna play it, right?" He's like, "Yes, yes, I'm gonna play." Like. That goes back to what I was saying the other week about Jones, man, where it's like, yo, just fucking, like, you could grab the mic there and just be like, yeah, as far as everything I'm hearing from the doctors, I will be clear, and I'm going to be out on that football field. We're going to, you know, let's get ready for this season. Like, give me a little round up, dude. <laughs> like, shit. Like, it's just, it's just like, uh, uh, yeah, that, I, uh, did I hear the question right? Okay, I don't want to make a mistake and answer it wrong. Like, dude. Ah. Well, 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 you guys can comment on that, but I'll get into that a little deeper again maybe next week. <laughs> I just hope that fucking Daniel Jones proves he's got a 13-inch cock this year, bro. <laughs> That's all you I care about. You guys start talking like he does. <laughs> uh, I, no, no. Be fucking silent. Be fucking hopefully silent. He's, Literally he slaps everybody with it. <laughs> yeah, bro. I hope he strangles motherfuckers with it. That's what I fucking hope. <laughs> Or, or but listen, people's esophagus. One, one, one good thing I will note for him, because like I said, I always leave on a positive, right, is that the dude was at voluntary practices. He is there getting right. I mean, Mike, you know this. I, I don't know. If, I, I hope I hope like somebody said that. I hope he was just like warming up. My man was doing like 90 pound dumbbells on the flat bench. I'm like, ah, that's not impressing me too much there. That's not impressing me. That, that was starting at a full quarterback. To do? That's like 62 a quarter, bro. Like, come on now. Hey, <laughs> he's not hey. throwing. He's got it what? Looks like I was getting reps in the 90s last year. I mean, you know, come on, dude. You can get right, 90s. What do you want to do? You want to put one in, so he fucking tears his shoulder? Yeah, I think his <laughs> neck is fine, though. He's throwing up 90s. I think his neck is just doing perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fucking that, I think that's probably more of what it was, really, was just the fact that he is coming back from injury. Now, I mean, of course, people bought that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, they yeah. bought that nonsense. I was I don't, real humor to it. Jules, I don't want him to look like a fucking bodybuilder and shit out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, going up 90 is good for a quarterback. I don't think Eli ever ever worked out. Not only that, I'm sure that his fucking 90 pound dumb, dumbbell presses isn't part of a so, one is a one of seven fucking exercises you're gonna do for the day. He probably works out for two three hours a day and then is a trainer for another hour, like to do probably. fucking other shit. You know, <clears throat> but yeah. No, nah, it was just it was just funny that that actually caught media attention and it was literally pointed out about the 90 pounds and about the weight. So I figured I had to throw a little humor into it before we fuck yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck the up. fucking media, bro. Giants yeah, I mean, it was media, just it was funny how like, how that went back and forth with backlash and then it then it didn't. But uh yeah. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I, I really think that, that kind of uh, wraps us up for this week. I hope everyone enjoyed what 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 we got 23 days to the draft 23 I'll, I'll, well right now we are at 22 days 23 hours and 23 minutes and uh, we'll say 23 seconds but not really but <laughs> right. 22 days really 23 days and you know, 22 you know days that from when you're going to be listening to this if you're right. listening to it when it drops by tomorrow like you know on Wednesday this week 22 days nothing bro that shit goes by like that Forget it. I mean, we're almost a third of the way through the year already. So, like, yeah, like, that's how fast it goes. But, uh, you know, and listen, that's that's the day. <clears throat> we know it's coming. And we're planning on having on guests. We're going to, you know, do another live draft. I don't know if we're going to get as drunk as we did last time because guys got to make it to work the next day. But, you know, it, we, we're definitely going to have some fun with it. As long as we don't trade back, we'll have a lot of fun with it. But uh, if we do, don't worry about it. We'll stick around for the whole draft. And guys, if you're interested in coming, you know to hit us up on the BBONYG podcast on Twitter. You can shoot shoot us a DM. You can also email us. Uh, you know, let us know you want to be on the show, man. Hang out with us for a few. We don't care. We, we're definitely going to have some people on. It'll be fun for a little while. And then we can actually see these, these picks happen live. Well, you'll, you'll see our reactions on YouTube if they're bad or if they're great. If I'm high-fiving or if I'm running out of the room, who knows? And we don't know. That, that's what the fun of, the funness of all this is. So... With all that in mind, hopefully there's a couple of things that develop between now and next week. But either way, we'll see you guys next week. For now, we're out of here. See you soon. Peace. <laughs>